Hey Coda people, this is the Coda Guy. And today I'm gonna to show you how to end-to-end -to -end make these quick date control filters that quickly changes any of your tables, timelines, or calendars with these preset dates above. So let's get into it. Uh, but first, we're gonna delete everything. All right. All right, so first, what you're gonna need inside of your doc are some date controls. These are named canvas formulas. Notice that this is a formula um, that grabs the current day of every single week. It even gives you an ability to start that on Monday. Notice how that shifts forward and that is the current week. And then you need to name them as well. After this video is done, you'll have an opportunity to grab this template for yourself. And from there you can grab these pieces. I'm not going to go into how to make these specifically, but once you have these in your doc, you have a lot of things you can do with them. So first let's make called DB timeline. We're going to have event, we're going to have a start date, date, and then I'm going to make just for fun to kind of show you guys some different things you can do. I'll just make this a slider or we're going to call it a length of event. That length is going to be a number. It is going to be a slider. I don't want to make it too big. So I'm going to take these options and I'm going to create it to be one and two. And the maximum event length is going to be seven and I'll increment by one. Value for new rows is going to be three. Why not? I'll apply that to those three blank rows. Now I need some event information for this timeline here. All right, so I don't bore you to death. I'm going to just copy and paste some info in there. We've got destroying the Death Star, Jedi School, a Wookiee party, and we're going to make our end date be um, the start date. And to bring up your formulas fast, you can just press equal on your column. I'm going to say start date plus length. So that will give me a date. Notice how that date changes based on how much I slide these. So I'm going to just kind of adjust these to be different lengths so we can have some fun later as we make our timeline. All right, there we go. We have our timeline. Uh, the next thing we need to do is these all need to be date types. So this looks like a date, but Coda is still reading it as a text type with that T there. So that won't be able to be used in a timeline. So what we're going to do is change that to an actual date. And now we're ready to go. Next, I want to make my timeline look pretty. So I'm going to show you how to automatically create colors on your tables that always update. So you don't have to make a ton of conditional formats. So this save you a lot of time. First, what we're going to do is we're going to make uh, one called a number. So I equals this table dot find this row. This is the easiest way to auto number your tables one through 10. Notice if I do a new one, it creates it to be 11. Um, next, in order to auto number or auto color your tables, this has to actually be a number value. Notice again, it's still a text. So always be checking your values. Uh, I'm going to change that to a number. And now I'm going to put a conditional format on it, but I'm going to apply it to event and not number. And now all of my events are colored. All right. So the next thing we need to do is create our actual timeline. So I'm going to call this my timeline. This is the background kind of where I can edit things where I can use things, but now I'm going to make a front end. So front end and a back end. My front end is going to be an actual timeline. Uh, I like this picture the best. And we're going to say DB timeline, insert that there. I'll call this timeline. I like to hide my titles. Um, next, I'm going to create it into a timeline over here. Great. Now I have a timeline, but as you can see, it's kind of big and if you have events that stretch over like a whole year, it's going to be this like endless scrolling thing or some of these will be tiny. So what you're going to want to do is to be able to filter this quickly and easily to see different gaps of time. How we can do that is press filter. We're going to add a filter to start date. You could do it to end date as well, but I'll do it to start date and I'll say uses interactive filter. I currently don't have any interactive filters in my document, so I'm just going to create it. There we go. So now this uses an interactive filter and this is fun and this is fine. Uh, you can kind of granularly drill down exactly what you want, right? You can do a fixed date range and just see that. You can see the last seven days, last 30 days. But what annoys me about these things is that they're just difficult. They just take a lot of clicks if I want to see something. So if I just want to see next month, I got to go to future and I got to go to next month, June, right? Three clicks. I don't want to do it in three clicks. I want to do it in one click a way that's a lot easier for my users. So what we're going to do is we're going to create buttons. 
Um, and that button is going to set a control value. This is called a control value. Let's name it to make it easy. I'm going to call it Mount This Week. All right. And then I like this blank one. I think it looks the best. Watch how this button changes our control value up here. May 22nd through May 28th. There we go. Now I'm going to copy that and put it down. And I'm going to call it next week. All right. But I'm going to get next week dot first, next week dot last. And then lastly, I'm going to put a little different symbol just to make it easier on my users to see which button is which. There you go. Next week, watch how this changes that timeline and it changes the different events we're going to see. Next up, I'm going to paste it again, but this time I'm going to right click in. I'm going to make it gray because this is going to be this month. So we're going to say this month. All right, everybody, I hope you like that smooth transition. My internet decided to just completely go out while I was doing this. Oh, well, we're going around with it. All right, so that's this month. Uh, let me lastly show you how to do last month or next month. We'll just change this to next. We'll change these values to the first value within next month and the last value within next month. Let's double check that these are working. Next month, June. This month, May next week and this week. Now I put these in a row here so that I can quickly turn them into columns. Just makes it look a little prettier. Let's do this month here. Next month drag. Next I'm gonna select all of these at the same time and I'm gonna put them in the middle and that makes it look a little nicer. And that is end to end how you create easy to use date controls. You can still use this at the top of course if you need a fixed range or anything else but you can quickly kind of modify these to be whatever your team needs. Whatever you do most often, turn three or four clicks into just one click. If you need the doc template, if you wanted this exact doc template, you can grab it in the comments below, in the description below. And there you go. That's how you make this.